Jesus, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. I want to share seven, seven, seven pillars. Amen. Hallelujah. I know some of you have received something precious, something powerful, something glorious, something powerful. Your life will never be the same. Never be the same. Mumbra Babaka Shandaba House. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mumbra Baba Rabaka Shandaba House. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want let me share something very, very quick. But right now, wherever you are, just lift up your hands. Spirit of God is breaking. I told you two angels were released. Hallelujah. I told you two angels were released. Even as you speak. Hmm. Some of you that have missed off some things. My brother. Hallelujah. You have you, my brother going through an attack at work. I command the divine restoration upon your life. Let that thing be released now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every that key that was stolen to accuse your life. Wherever that key was taken in the bottomless in the bottomless river, in the name of Jesus, let that key be restored back now to your place of work. In the name of Jesus, I command the key to be revealed. Let every negative verdict against you be reversed by the blood. I command every words, every judgment against your life to be favorable to you from today. We overcome it now. We overshadow it now. We reverse it now. We revoke evil judgment against your life by the power and the blood. Lord, I decree and I pray for everyone here. Their compensation is now. The same authority, the same authority, the same authority, same authority right now that was released over your son that you troubled the heart of a king until you showed favor to Mordecai. The king, the Bible says, lost his sleep. Lord, with the authority here now, Holy Spirit, begin to trouble every helper that has been assigned specifically to promote your people to dignity, to promote your people to honor. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the book of remembrance be open now. Trouble them now. Trouble them now. Trouble the king. Trouble every man, every woman that has to show them favor, that has been assigned and released to show your people favor. Let your helper be, be troubled now. Let their sleep be troubled until they show favor to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, hand of Jehovah, as they hear the sound of my, as they hear the sound of my voice, let every tomb every banger that holds the wealth of your people right now let it be released let every vault let the vault be open now and let the treasures of your people be restored be restored be restored be restored be restored within two weeks within these two weeks before the end of this year every prophecy you have given to them every declaration over their lives are every helper that has been held back lord i command them to be released let them appear let there be a manifestation of the prophecies let there be a manifestation of the blessings of of the blessings over your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Sarabaka Sondo Brenda Libibia. I declare your life fruitful. I declare your life fruitful. Every handwriting, every handiwork of the devil today is destroyed. I paralyze the handiwork of the devil. I said today, release your mandate of favor. Release the hand of favor. I release the hand of favor upon your life. I position you. Let your accusers be silenced forever. Let the voice of the accuser be silenced forever. I silence the voice of the accuser by the power in the blood. I subdue every satanic attack. Makota Bahala Badilia is only make a Priya Paradia. My God, my God. Igana Makapara Kazandaria. Jesus, Jesus, I decree for a 24 hour miracle, a 24 hour financial miracle to be released now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me share the word of the Lord very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Let me share the word of the Lord very, very quickly because there is a mental being released in the atmosphere. Rose Zambaran Talamba Kobon Dorios. Some of you have been, <laughs> some of you have been, have been trying to follow me, monitor me, amen. Hallelujah, predict me, amen. But God has the upper say. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way the spirit of God moves. We don't even understand the wavings of the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, open this word today. Speak to our hearts today. Minister to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. For the for, for, for we are dealing with seven ladders of greatness. Amen. 24. I said 24. Sorry. You, you, this typing you are doing. There are seven ladders to greatness that I want to address. Amen. In life, there are ladders that we have to climb. In life, there are some ladders the Lord wants us to climb. And uh, 
And uh, uh, based on what I want to share with you today is that there are different kind of ladders. Hallelujah. And if we miss these steps, we must understand that the Lord will orchestrate it again to start again in our lives. Number one, I want to deal with something very, very unique, very, very powerful. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Zoom, brother, rabaka, shande, bo, salabaha. Igala, mandele, bebe, bebe, apara, dele, bebe, os. Somebody say ladder. Seven ladders, seven staircases to greatness. Hallelujah. Just seven of them. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Obedience. Number one is obedience. I want to deal with them now. Let me just run through them. I hope I have the time. Somebody say obedience. <clears throat> obedience. Somebody say obedience. Number one, obedience. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, obedience, if you're willing or obedience, the Bible says you will eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. You will eat the good of the land. Obedience has a powerful role. Amen. Hmm. And so many people are being are going left and right. Hallelujah. Because why? Uh, let's open our Bible to Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. There is a light that is descending upon me now. I could feel it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Okay. Before we go to the Deuteronomy, I want to share something with you. Hallelujah. Obedience. If obedience. And, and so when we're talking about obedience, if you're willing obedience, you will eat the good of the land. Before we go into that, what kind of voice... When there are several others of greatness, God will always sometimes will have to put somebody ahead of us. There is always a voice that we have to listen to. There is always a detect. There is always a direction. There is always an instruction given to us by his word. Given to us by God. Amen. God has laid it out there. Number one. Amen. The, uh, God himself is, our, is, is, is the voice of God. Number two. The Bible himself. The Bible, which is the word of the Lord. Number three. The inner witness of the Holy Spirit, which is God Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. And these are the voices. And also, we also have our earthly father and mother. Amen. Where we receive an instruction from God. If we fail and we disobey, and if we don't follow these directions and the instruction, then we then we are led in a different path. Hallelujah. The first one I want to deal with is Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, this is when it pertains to man. Let's quickly go there too. Let's quickly go there. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy to uh, Deuteronomy to 21, verse 21 and verse 18. You can see I'm rushing, but I hope you have the patience. Hallelujah. It says in verse in verse 1: If a man have a stubborn and a rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, that when they had chastised ch 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 chased him. And we are not hacking unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto them, say, This is our son, is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. Hallelujah. Look at what it says in verse 21. And all the men of this his city shall stone him, which is stones, that he die. Hallelujah. So shall thou put a evil away among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. This is verse 21. Amen. Saying something that is very, very, very unique. That obedience to your parents extends longevity in your life. Brings longevity. Extends longevity in your life. Hallelujah. And it says, obey your father and your mother that it may go well with you. That it may be well with you. Hallelujah. It might be what? Well with you. And these are these earthly authority so they have a backing authority that whatsoever they say can affect your destiny it can affect your life it can keep your life barren and it's not just because of what they say sometimes the enemy will try to provoke them to provoke you that's why the bible says don't provoke your children because they can be so provoked and you see if you study the bible and the book of genesis it talks about how um, uh, what's his name jacob hallelujah 
and the wife begin to leave rachel amen hallelujah and leah began to leave the father's house uh, laban they began to leave laban's house as they were leaving amen hallelujah uh, rachel took the gods or took some idols of the father's house to the idols of laban and laban said something that was very 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 uh, uh, god warned laban in a dream he said be careful what you say to jacob and so when he got to Jacob, he provoked Jacob, and Jacob made a, a, a declaration. He says, whoever took it, let him die. Whoever took the idol, let him die. Whoever took the idol, let him die. Not knowing that it was his wife that he loved the most. It was the wife that, was, that, that he worked for. Delayed himself for years, for 14 years. He tried to get Rachel. The woman that he saw, and he cried. So he made him a statement, not knowing that Rachel has the idol. He says, whoever took this idol shall die. And so the, by that statement alone, not that God honored that statement. It was the devil. The devil was looking for every attempt to remove joy from Jacob. It looks like if you see the story or the lifestyle of the life of Jacob, you will see that Jacob's life wasn't, he, he went through so much problems. Why? Is it because he stole the brother's blessing? Is it because he deceived the father? No. The father never cursed him. The father gave him another blessing. So who cursed him? Because God himself blessed him. The mother too blessed him. So who cursed him? I believe the brother. It wasn't written. Hallelujah. But I believe the brother cursed Jacob for taking his birthright. While he was searching for Jacob to kill Jacob, I made him meet, I believe he made some declarations. A cost costless cannot come on somebody. But if you deserve it, if you made a mistake, and a curse is being pronounced over you, it will happen. That is why Jacob had to wrestle with God until his name was changed. God had to place a blessing upon Jacob. And Jacob had to, because Jacob knew that he had done something and he would not rest. Your father just blessed you. You went to Laban's house. Laban did not see the blessing. He seen the blessing, but instead of him giving you what you want, you labored for seven years and for 14 years. And there was a huge delay. Somebody says it's because of what you sold. No. God, he said, he said, Esau I hate. Jacob I love. So if God loved Jacob, why did Jacob have to go through those 14 years of delay? Somebody cursed him in the bloodline. Not his father, not his mother. But Esau. Esau made a pronouncement. And the devil saw that to hinder and to stop. Who is cursing you? Who did you offend that has pronounced this plague over you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you see, I don't want to digress. I don't want to get distracted by exactly what the Lord wants us to do here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But well, look at what he says in now. Uh, Job 36, Job 36 verse 12, Job 36 verse 11, I love what it says. It says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity. Job 36 verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in pleasure and prosperity. There are two, it's two, it's two words. You can't just obey. You must also serve. If they obey, who do you obey? How do you serve and obey him? The word obey, what does it mean? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The word obey, what does it mean? Greek word says shama, to hear, to listen, to instruction, to be attentive, to understand. Hallelujah. 
God spoke to Abraham and Moses. He said, I've commanded you to bless the children of Israel. This is how you bless. I commanded you. I've given you a command to bless them. And this is how you bless. God gives an instruction through his word. And if you fail to obey such words, look at what it says in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28. Quickly, let's go there. Oh my goodness, I hope I could go through all this today. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord. Remember the word, obedience, comes with obey. Meaning hearing attentively to the voice of God. Diligently, listening. Hack it diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all of his commandments. You don't just observe it, it's to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. God will lift you up above the nations of the earth by what? Obedience. If you will diligently hearken, he said to the voice of the Lord thy God. There is always a voice that speaks to us. There is always a voice that has been released in this season. You must understand which voice are you listening to? There is an inner voice of the flesh. There is an inner voice of the spirit. In the voice of God, there is life. So when God, you begin to hear that inner voice speak to you. If you obey, he says, I will set thee on high. The more you hear the voice, the more you trust on that voice, the more you rely on that voice, the more you depend on that voice, the more you understand, comprehend that voice, that voice will lead you to elevation. He says, verse 2, And all these blessings shall come upon thee, and overtake thee, if thou wilt hearken to the voice. Somebody say the voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody keeps saying it. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall I be in the field. Bless, 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 bless. But the funny thing, do we hear a voice? Do you think the voice is an inner voice? You see, the voice comes from the inside, the Holy Spirit. But the voice also too comes from the preacher. The voice also comes from your shepherd. The voice also comes the spirit of truth we go ahead and orchestrate and send help us your way you see when Balaam could not hear the voice of God when Balaam began to disobey the voice of God Balaam began to ask should I go with them should I not go should I go with them should I not go what happened what happened to Balaam eventually they brought some blessings to Balaam Balaam says okay you know what I'm going shall we go and as they begin to go the bible says the angel stood before the donkey with his sword and opened the mouth of the donkey and the donkey began to speak that voice was a voice to the prophet if he disobeyed that voice he would have perished Many people have gone to that place of disobedience. Look at what it says in Job chapter 12, the next verse. Job chapter 12. I mean Job 36 verse 12. You know, every time God gives the criteria, he will always give also the, 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 the rewards of disobeying him. If he tells you that if you obey, I will lift you up. If you disobey, this is what will happen. Read from verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, in their years in pleasures. 
But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. They shall die without knowledge. It means that they will perish in ignorance. If you don't obey the voice of God, you can perish without having understanding to the promise of God. Meaning, you might think that it's God's will for you to die now, not knowing that you died because of disobedience. Disobedience is very costly. Very costly. Obey and serve him. Serve him. How do you serve him? Somebody says serve him. It's a two-edged sword. So the word serve means to walk and to labor. When you serve, you obey the instruction and you go ahead and you begin to serve the Lord. How do you serve him? He said, go ye to the world and preach the gospel. Have you served the Lord or are you serving men? I love how people take the task of the ministry take some of the task of the preacher and begin to serve. If you obey and serve him, if you obey him, you must also serve him. What does it mean? Your father will say, son, can you buy me some milk from the grocery store? You say, yes, I would. I will do it. You've obeyed to do it. But the obedience is not complete. But you've gone to the store to buy the milk. Your procrastination doesn't mean that you've obeyed God. You must understand that... Some people say, I'm looking for God, I'm looking for God. You must have understanding that the more you serve the God in the voice, the God in people. You see, you might not see God physically. You might see God as the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth meaning the counsel of the Lord. The same spirit of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Many people can say that I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit, but it, 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 the Lord will, it, the Bible says, the sheep hear my voice. Hallelujah. You will hear the voice of the Lord and strangers they will not follow. There are shepherds that have the voice of God. There are shepherds that is a carrier of the truth of God. There are shepherds that God has placed in your path. When you meet with them, you connect with them. Either by your death or birth, either by your same month, either by your experience. There is a connection like Elizabeth and Mary. You will know that this is the one God has sent into my life. If you find such people and you begin to serve the God in them, not them, the God in them. The Spirit of God will begin to arise inside of you. The word say is a, is, is, is a humble word. It's not an easy word. The word save, to save. People think you are saving a man. You're not saving a man, you're saving a God in a man. If you have the if you're saving a man, you will get so frustrated, so angry. And God this same man is so human. And it can be also in on human or in, how did they say it? Man without conscience. When you serve men, it can be loving today. It can it can act wayward. It can it can show all kinds of signs that you might disrespect him. That's why he's man. But when you serve the God in him, your eyes and your focus is for the kingdom. You're not doing it because you love him. You're doing it because God. And listen to me. There's no way you serve God and you go unrewarded. 
your service will always prove your humility. Are you hearing me? God never maltreats his laborers. Those who labor in the kingdom are crowned. Those who labor in the kingdom are given precious stones. Those who labor in the kingdom are counted for their generations. God begins to bless you generation to generation. It multiplies your seed. Are you hearing me today? It's not just blessing. You become a carrier of the blessings of God. You see, the boys and the guys who designed the ark of God's covenant, who God said, I in them I put the spirit of wisdom. Even their children, the children's children, will become a carrier of that grace. Obey God. Obey God. I said to God, I said to this 2018, it's going to be thorough obedience, thorough reliance on God. Some of us use our job to shield us from depending on God. Elijah could have gone out there to look for a job to sustain him rather than him obeying to go down to the woman to the Zarephath woman's house. He could have just go get a job, but it, he sought to rely on the voice of God. The voice of God is your shepherd, is your direction. He will lead you, he will guide you. He leads my soul. He will lead you beside still waters. Even through the valley of the shadow of death, he will lead you. At the end of it all, your faith will be so built up, solidified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you obey and serve him, serve him, serve him. What was Jacob doing to Laban? Jacob served Laban. He served Laban. Why did Jacob have to go through that? When you study the scriptures, you realize that Jacob was pampered. Jacob had ev everything he needed. Jacob was everything he needed was provided by the mother. Why Esau was the one that was working and laboring. He always went to the farm. I don't think Jacob had to work. He was just at home. But, but, but Esau kept moving. He went, he labored for, to, to feed the father. He labored to even cook a meal for the father. He labored to go hunt. But he was never rewarded by his labor. So in other words, he served his father. You must serve, you must labor. When you labor for a man or a woman under the authority of God, God will authorize you to be blessed. Are you hearing me? You're not laboring for a man. You're laboring for the kingdom of God. laboring for the kingdom of God. We must labor into rest. We must serve God with our tithes. We must serve God with our, with, our, with our prayers. Serve his kingdom. Do you know to pray, to intercede, is not, it's, it's very hard? Do you know to pray, it means self-denial. You come to that place where you begin to pray and pray and pray, you lose sleep. It takes a lot of discipline. There's a lot of focus. You are serving in the kingdom. What does that mean? You are being an instrument of light. Listen to me. Go and ask those who are agents of the devil. The devil takes their sleep. All night they are looking for how to afflict people to place curses on churches or ministers. They can spend a long time on somebody's picture enchanting evil on them. 
The devil knows how to reward them. They are afflicted, they are troubled, they are troubled with fear. But when we come into the body of Christ, he says, if you serve me, how do you serve the Lord? How do you spread his gospel? How do you extend his flyers? Do you invite people when you listen to the gospel? Every time I listen to a strong message that builds me up, I want to extend it to all my friends so that they get blessed, so, so that the same grace that came upon me will come upon them. You are serving the kingdom. The Bible says, He that winning to his soul is wise. When the Lord tells you, 2 a.m., my daughter, get up and pray. Are you ready to pray? Oh, I need to sleep now. I need to sleep now. My sister, you need to put this food away and fast for this week. Are you ready to hear that voice? My sister, um, I'm bringing some pizza for you. I'm bringing some this and some dessert. I'm bringing some pasta for you, some salad. You want me to bring it now or you want me to take it back? Um, no, 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 um, no, 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 I will not be, thank you. And you hang up the phone. And my sister said, oh, by the way, you're working so hard. I'm stopping by the subway. You want me to get some lunch for you? Okay, all right, bring it. Lord, I will do this fasting tomorrow. And the time comes. And the Lord is saying, do you love me more than these? Are you obeying me? Are you going to procrastinate? And the time will come. Oh God. Lord, show me mercy. Let me start all over. He's a humble God. And He gives you time and again. But the more He gives you time, the more you don't take it seriously. The more you become more sensitive to the flesh. And very soon you give up in obeying God. If you obey God and serve Him, you will spend your years in prosperity and the days in pleasure. I pray that the power of obedience will be given to you. I pray you don't lose anything because of disobedience. I personally have lost a lot of things this year because of disobedience. In 2018, we must obey God. We must obey God. We must obey that voice. We must obey God in what He has told us to do. There is no backing up, no backing down. I told you before. Hmm. What does it mean to serve? Before Moses could lead millions of people, he was a servant. Sometimes when God puts, it's funny, amazing how God had a calling on Moses and had a calling on Jacob. And Moses did not save a preacher. Moses saved a man who was a Christian but not really anointed as him. Jacob saved a man that was even an unbeliever. We can say maybe because of he needed a wife. Sometimes before God will entrust an anointing on your life, it causes you to save those who are below you. He wants to see your humility. He wants to see your murmurings. You see, before Jesus was crowned, before Jesus was given the special seat at the right hand of the Father, a whole God was slapped by the men, a whole God was spat on by men, a whole God was humiliated, disgraced by men, scandalized, stigmatized. He could have caught on fire. In the midst of all that, you know what he said? Forgive them, for they don't know what they do. What? If you just say forgive them, I understand. 
Now you are saying that they don't even know what they did. So who did it? Lucifer. So Lucifer was influencing all these people to fight the Creator. That's why he said, forgive them for they don't know what they do. So if they knew, then probably they would have gone through punishment. We must serve. 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 It won't cost you anything. It won't break your ego. It will only break your ego. But serve we qualify you for something greater. There was a ministry that was going through that I, I was working with. And the way things went, the way they treated me and the way things went, it, it didn't just go well. And I realized that the ministry began to go through a state um, through which the wrath of God was being released. The ministry began to go through a, a season. And I knew because it wasn't growing anymore. Because if you realize, many of the cities that oppress the ministers, I remember a preacher was sharing how he went to go preach the gospel in a particular village. As he grabbed the microphone, the whole rain, rain started and scattered the whole meeting. So he, he was so troubled by that because the man, is, the man of God is very anointed and he prays. Well, how come God allowed the rain to fall? So he called the elders and the elders said there was a preacher that got killed. That they, he, he, they killed the preacher. And so since then, God has, God's wrath has been released in that place. Every time preachers, that's why the Bible says, touch them anointed and do my prophets no harm. When his prophet are killed, God doesn't like it. A curse come on the land. If your family is involved in those who kill pastors, a curse will usually flow. God said, Paul, you will suffer many things for my sake. Many things. Hallelujah. If you obey and serve him, you will live your life, spend your years in prosperity. You must labor. You must walk. Hallelujah. You must use your gifting to serve in the kingdom. And it will be accounted for you. It will be crowned at the end. Whether he's winning souls and you're supporting the winning souls, it will be accredited to your account. Moses saved and then Joshua saved Moses. Hallelujah. Number two. Um, time has passed already. I'm just going to share this one. Hallelujah. Number two. appreciation hallelujah appreciation you know um there's so many things i'm telling you this seven point seven i think uh we'll not be able to share everything today because i know some people have to walk but one of the things I want to share with you, okay? Appreciation. Appreciation. Gratitude. Gratitude. Jesus healed ten lepers. Only one came to say thank you. And Jesus says, your faith has made you whole. That scripture... That statement baffled me. I was puzzled by that statement. I, I was thinking about it. I said, what do you mean his faith has made him whole? And the Lord 
I love that word Selah. And when I paused, God began to speak to me. The Lord spoke to me, and the Lord said, Son, have you ever appreciated me? I said, Yes, I have appreciated you. He said, No. I mean, the people that I use in your life. I said, ah. I don't think we ever appreciated people. I don't even think we really go back and look back and say, hmm, how many people that have been a blessing in my life have I ever appreciated? How many people have I really thanked? Yes, a lot of people who have been a blessing in my life. But who really have I really sent a card? Christmas card of appreciation and saying thank you. Who really? We have friends in the past. We even have mentors in the past. We have preachers in the past. Who has God has used to model our lives and give us direction. We have friends who have been a blessing in our lives. Why is it that when we leave, we leave without looking back? But they were an instrument to restore us to where we are now. They never gave up on us, but we give up easily on them for the slightest mistake. Well, listen to me. We were insane. They prayed for us till Christ was formed in our hearts. They raised us up in prayer. Now we are strong in God. We look at them like Eli and say, Eli, you've lost the glory. You are gone. Be gone. I don't need to be associated with you. And the Lord says, Son, they might be in darkness now. They might have taken your place as once you were when you were in darkness. Never forget how they prayed for you and labored for you till you were out of darkness. You still need to appreciate them. 2018. Take that time. Write down a list of every man, every woman in your life. And appreciate them. Show honor to them. We have a long list of many who have we've not shown honor. We only love those who tell us what we want to hear. Those who really pray for us. We disregard them. Those who don't have time for us, we appreciate them so much. Why? Some of us have neglected even our parents, fathers and mothers. Those who have labored and labored for us. Prayed for us denying themselves the pleasure of going on vacation using their money to stick razors up we've neglected them let's try and appreciate them make a list and tell them how valuable they are in your life in our lives that little sowing of honor will bring a major harvest. You might not see Jesus to appreciate him, but appreciating those who were used in your life, Jesus will be appreciated indirectly. 
a true sign of saying, Lord, thank you for laboring in my life. It's a sign of humility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last one for today. We're talking about seven ladders to greatness. Your level of generosity act activates to the level of helpers you're going to get. You cannot be a stingy man and feel that your helpers will be activated in your life. You want dangerous helpers? Be a dangerous giver. Today I was praying to the Lord. The Lord says, I was talking to the Lord and I says, Lord, 2018, I want to be a dangerous giver. Many of us are just, we just focus on our tithes. In fact, some of us don't even tithe at all. Hallelujah. Some of us don't even tithe. Some of us, <laughs> Jesus. Some of us have become spiritual robbers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Zelebrados to you, brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. We must embrace God. Hmm? We must embrace God. I want to. I want to. I want to show you something so that you 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 are aware of it. Amen. I want to show you something. Um, when you steal something, let's open our Bible to the book of Zechariah. Let me let me go there quickly. Hallelujah! The book of Zechariah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Among the Lebrados and the Bohos of Priestess. Okay, I'll read from verse 5, chapter 5, Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah chapter 5, he says, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. Flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. Verse 3. Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the earth. Everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as one of this side according to it. Everyone that see, swear it shall be cut off. Wow. Amen. Look how it says in verse 4. I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of, of the thief, and into the house of him that swear it falsely by the name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with him by thereof, and the stones thereof. Hallelujah. Hmm. So what, is, so what is this trying to say? There is a curse that goes against those who steal or rob. Now we've seen this now. You go to the Mal that same scripture, the Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. Amen. Now if you realize that God begin, was addressing not just the preachers. He was addressing the ministers. 
Amen. He was addressing the ministers. So let it be like judgment starts from the top. Everybody is not free from tithing. Everybody must hide. Hallelujah. Because if not, there is a criteria. Look at what it says in verse 8. Malachi 3. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye see, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. He said, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So we are seeing that a thief, the curse goes into the house of a thief. Verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be me meat in my house. Prove me now, hear it, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. He said, prove me. This is the only time we see in the scripture when God says, prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven. What are you trying to tell us, Lord? It means that Even if you have your tithe left and you don't even have your rent to pay. He says, prove me and see if it will fail, if I don't obey, if I don't show up myself in your life. Try me. Even if you don't have faith, say, try me. Let's see. The Bible says, cast your you sit upon many waters. Sometimes it, it, might, it might not take immediately. You may not get immediate response from God. But the more you prove to God, God will prove himself that he is God in your life. Hallelujah. Every time, the more you prove to God, God will begin to prove to God in, his, in your life. That you know what? You cannot forgive God. Hallelujah. We see great men in the Bible how they became blessed but just by tithing. Who told you that tithing is, uh, is easy? It's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Somebody's sacrifice. You've heard me say, you see? Hallelujah. Abraham became blessed because he was tithing. Before Abraham, he wasn't commanded in the Bible to tithe. So how come Abraham understood Titan to Melchizedek? God kept adding to him, adding to him. Everything given to you, listen to you know what's so hard and painful about Abraham? Abraham, it was so hard for Abraham. You know why? Because Abraham has been believing. I'm praying to God, God give me a song, give me a song, give me a child. And after God answered him after, after 25 years of request, that same child, God now says, Son, carry this child to the mountain and sacrifice him unto me. What is that trying to say is that, Nini, Abraham, you love your son so much since I gave you this gift. You don't spend time with me anymore. You spend time with this, your son all the time. Okay, come, bring your son to me now. God is saying to you, that your job that you love so much, that precious thing that you love so much, he said, offer it to me as a sacrifice. So Abraham took that child to God. He says, take. Not necessarily trying to say kill him, but kill the idol that you place in your heart. Some of you love your wife so much that she takes your place of your prayer. She's an idol now. Or he's your idol. You prefer him above God. And God is saying, sacrifice it. Sacrifice it. And so when Abraham came to that place whereby he, led, he, he saw that God was a jealous God, he saw that God was saying, I am your king. Value me more than your son. I should be the first in your life. The moment Abraham caught that revelation, God now said, okay, I have a provision for you. 
Yes, the sacrifice, not your son. What I was trying to tell you, not for you to sacrifice your son. What I wanted you to know is I know you love your son. I am your first priority in your life. Make the sacrifice and dedicate your family to me. And Abraham offered you know, Abraham never told his wife that that very gift that God gave to me, God wanted me to offer it to God. If it was now, we would have dissected it, broke it down. How can you give me this very gift I've been praying for? And now you're asking me to come and kill this child. That was his way of thinking. But God didn't also kill it. He's never written in the Bible, God, go and kill a bell. No. He says, dedicate him to me like you did to Samuel. Give him up to my temple. Give him up. It doesn't belong to you. This is your first child. Give it to me as a seed. That was what God was telling Abraham. Offer it to me. And Abraham, just like us, we could not interpret the word that voice very well. So we took knife to kill that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that you must understand is that one of the things that you must understand we are almost done. Hallelujah. We are almost done. Somebody say tithing. And Malachi chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. You know, you must understand the grace of sacrifice. 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 I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let me just say. You've heard a lot of preachers say. Titan is the secret to wealth. If a preacher is not sacred. It's not giving. It's not tithing. It can break your own curse. On the ministry. If a father is not tithing. He can bring a whole family. To everyone in the family including the wife and the children. If the wife is not tithing, it can bring fruitlessness to her own body. When you begin to tithe, it releases a special spirit of increase, grace from God. God begins to rebuke devourer called death. It begins to rebuke devourer called waste. It begins to rebuke devourers that comes to rob away your joy. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want us one more scripture and then we go. Amen. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. Amen. Mm. Ah, bless your name. Okay, look at uh let's open our Bible to the book of Okay. Alright. Matthew 20, 20, Matthew chapter 20, verse 23. Let's quickly go there. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, Luke 638. Quickly, quickly. Let me let, let's 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 run up. So, oh my goodness, time is gone. All right. Luke 638. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna read quickly. Hallelujah. I'm gonna read very quickly. It says, Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Wow. Can you stop there? People say, Oh, wow, this guy is talking about giving and giving. Listen, 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 listen to me. All of us on this universe wants people to give to us. 
everybody wants everyone to give to us. But in order for that to happen, God is saying that people will give to you. But they will give in response to what you give to others. Give, it shall be given to you. It's going to be pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? So in a measure that you give, look at what it says. It says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It says, Forgive us. Forgive those who trespass against us. So as we forgive them, so let God forgive us. As we give, God too will cause men to give to us. As we give abundance, so men, God, men, God will stir up men to give to us. If we give wickedness, if we sow wickedness to others, we will reap the same thing. Whatever we do to others, we will reap the benefit. You cannot be deceit. You can't tell lies and you think that people will not tell lies to you. If you sow deception to others, you will reap deception. If you are sincere with people, people will be sincere with you. If you are fake to others, if you are fake, people will be fake to you. But if you are genuine, if you are generous to others, if you are caring and loving, you raise up harvest of laborers and lovers. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing, hearing me today? Am I saying something right? Glory to God. Your hour has come. It's going to be very, very serious. Year 2000? Trust me. It's a year of the miraculous. Year 2018? Give your way out of trouble. Are you hearing me? I love his sister, how, what, she, what she did. Traveled. She saw like a kids, some kids. And she said, man, you know what? I need to pay for their school fees. And she got their numbers, their information. And every time they need to go to school, she sent money to them. Do you think God will forget such individual? And I say, you know what? I'm going to find widows. I'm going to find some people. And I'm going to be paying and paying for them too. Every time they need. You must give. Be a giver. If you hold on to your words and say you're stingy because this one likes you. Same thing people will do to you. You have an attitude towards money. People will have an attitude towards money about you. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love all. Finally, look at what it says. I'm going to read it again. Verse 38 Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure. The word give wasn't, it didn't say money. It wasn't money. It just says give. So if you give a wrong attitude, he said, it shall be given unto you, in good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men, he didn't say shall man, shall men, it's not, it becomes plural. So if you sow negative to an individual, you smear him, you become negative, you gossip about him, that's giving. You give evil words about somebody else, when it's your turn to reap. He says, not one person will do it to you, men will multiply that which you are sown. It will be shaking together. It will be running over. Shall men give to your bosom? You give kindness. Oh, men will come and sow that kindness to you. You spend time to pray for an individual. Patient with them. Oh, you're going to see the reward. God will raise intercessors for you. Impatient, we will get ready. But I'm 
pray for you that today in this season, I hope you've heard this word. We have some more to go. People who have negative attitude about giving will never reach a place of surplus. We never have a generous heart. But well, in this season, I pray for you that by the power in the Holy Ghost, every setback raised up against you is hereby scattered, is hereby demolished in the name of Jesus. I have to call and round up this because I know the time is far spent. I have we covered only three today. We'll cover the rest four. Amen. We'll cover the rest four. Amen. Find somebody to be a blessing to. Find somebody. I want you to show honor to those who have helped in the past. Some of us will never even show honor. We never even go and call them or thank them. We we'll thank them in words, but we we'll never even so. Don't forget that. If you show in, if you sow in gratitude, you ignore the good they've done. A sister once said, "Oh, please, I mean, it's not a big deal. You don't need to. God uses them. You don't need to call them and say thank you, thank you, please." And she goes arrogantly like that. I say, sister, would you say thank you, please? God use you. I don't need to tell you. You don't need to take all the glory. I say, okay. When you run a ministry, when the time came, everybody began to disappoint. Everybody was not appreciating her. Why? Because she failed to thank you, to say thank you. It's a seed. And I pray that you don't sow a seed and reap the harvest. A negative harvest. Nobody wants a negative harvest. Everybody wants a positive harvest. When you put smile in the eyes of the others, when you wipe off the tears of those who are elders, definitely God will bless you. God will bless you. In this season, I should spend time in God's presence. Oh my goodness. I know of a great man of God that always kneels before he leads prayers. He goes on his knees and begins to kneel down before God. But I realize that if you kneel down in worship all the time to God, you will never kneel before men. Instead, men will kneel before you. Whatever you do for God, God will cause men to do for you. Whatever you, whatever displeasure you do to God, God will cause men to sacrifice for you. Yo, this is deep, 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 deep. That is why when you are helping people, don't give up easily on people. Don't give up. Don't fold your hands and just move on. Go through the sufferings. Hang in there because your time is coming. You want stubborn helpers. You don't want people helpers that just give up on you. Stubborn helpers. You don't want quitters. Get ready. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's round up. Let's round up. Hallelujah. Let's round up. Because, I mean, we've, 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 we've spoken elaborately and uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say 12, raise me up 12 pillars. 12 pillars of the gospel. 12 pillars. Hallelujah. I want to be among the 12 pillars of God. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone today for darling. Amen. Your life will never be the same again. Never be the same after today. I ask that the same God that has kept us will keep you. I decree by the power of the blood of Jesus that the spirit of obedience will run through your blood from today. That the Lord will empower you to prosper and the Lord will empower you to obey and to serve Him in everything that you do. By the power in the Holy Ghost, I pray you serve Him with your resources. I pray you serve God with the humility of your heart. In everything you do, that you serve Him. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless God for you. And I decree that His hand be released upon you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone today for Dalini. The Lord bless you. Amen. Let me unmute. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know, please, quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Zuzu Hallelujah. Any question before we go? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? I hope you heard me very well. Amen, amen. All right, God bless you, man. We will talk again. Bye bye now. Have a good Friday, and uh, tomorrow we shall meet. Yeah, tomorrow, same time. Oh, tomorrow is finished. Yes, tomorrow is Saturday. Okay. All right. God bless everyone today. All right. We shall talk to you. Bye -bye. You'll be there at six tomorrow. Yes, I will be there. All right. God bless you, Sister Ida. God bless you. Hey, God bless you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hey, God bless you. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Who are the twelve pillars? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Amen. We'll talk about it. Glory to God. God bless you.